Yes, on the moment to start, I would like to welcome you all here in this public uh, uh, lecture given by uh, Dr. Aya Wang, Aja Wang, that is pronounced very well. Uh, this is organized by the uh, International Computer Chess Association, the University of Leiden, and now it's the presence uh, of LIAX uh, uh, and LCDS. And if you look at the program for the events we have, there are many more sponsors. Uh, I'm afraid to mention them. My name is Jaap van Heerlijk. I will be succeeded by Hideki Kato. And then we have the main speaker. And finally, the uh, meeting will be uh, completed by Professor Aske Platt. That is for uh, this afternoon. I will take two minutes. Hideki will take five minutes. And then I will have to say one more thing. Apart from the lecture, there is also a question and answering uh, compartment. So during the lecture, you can, pre you can prepare your question. I'm here to honor Aja Wang. And I do so on behalf of the ICGA. The ICCA stands for the International Computer Games Association. From the beginning, they have a best performance award, a best, uh, yeah, a best performance in the publication, either table basis or whatever. At first, it was called the Befisto Award, then the Novo Novak Award, then the, uh, the, the Chess Base Award, and finally, it is now the ICGA Award. Not to, I would say, to interchange with the ICCA Publication Award, that's completely the other thing, you saw. It is for the best performance in the year 2015. And it is without any doubt, as you may understand, that the jury decided to award this to the Google team DeepMind for the performance, not in March this year, because that's 2016, not for the publication in Nature, because it was in January 2016, but for the performance in October 2015 by defeating the European champion by 5-0. I would like to ask you to come forward and then to, I'll say, to take the award, which I show you here. Oh, what's this? Okay, anyway, this is the, this is the award. Having done my job in this case, Yes, um, we have a second award. The second award will be handed over by Hideki, Hideki Kato. He is a representative of the team Deep Zen, a previous contender of uh, AlphaGo, and he is also because he does so on the on behalf of the Computer Go Forum. And uh, uh, he is a board member of the Computer Go Forum. It is my pleasure to give the floor to you. Uh, we 
our forum mm, gave some memorial to whatever uh, about the past. Uh, last year, for example, I sent uh, a large map of Japan in uh, English version to Nick Webb. Uh, his favorite is uh, collecting maps. Um, this is what gradually is. But for this year, the team's um, achievement was so great, so <laughs> very difficult to choose a uh, memorial. But luckily, very fortunately, um, there is almost the same level of things happening in Japan. Uh, Yuta Iyama, uh, first even possesses a safety plan uh, of Japanese uh, boat type, safety. He possesses uh, all seven titles in Japanese boat work. <coughs> yeah, very great job. So I chose Memorial Fun. Oh, yeah. This is fun. Um, the left side is a signature and battle. Also, there's seven titles here. The center uh, are idiom of two hundred characters. It's read from right to left according to all the Japanese rules. Uh, ko tat. Ko is wide. Tat is too rich. The, this idiom means with broad mind to reach the deep of the truth of things. With broad mind to reach the deep of the truth of things. Now, I think very good for the team. But unfortunately, um, the Limited budget, due to the limited budget of our court, <laughs> I will <laughs> prepare after only two months. I know the three key persons of the team, David uh, Sotabi, David Silver, and Aja, all play for. <laughs> yeah. So, these two from the forum to David Sotabi and David and I prepared personally one for one for my best friend. <laughs> Thank you. From me. Thank you very much. There is still a thing, I forgot one thing that's in between, but I do it now together. It is, I would say, polite to give Aja or the floor to thank for both presents, as you understand. That is at least in Japan a habit. So, uh, but I will not interfere twice. To so, I announced that he started with thanking the two for the two awards, and then he, he immediately starts thereafter his talk. And his talk, you will see the title, but I give you another title, and that title should be From Erika to Alpha Go. Erika is the program with which he started to be well known in our world, in our ICCA computer even, ICCA events world. So he was always a front runner in Goa. I could tell many things about it, but I left it to, I will leave it to him. Aja, it is my a pleasure to have you here. You, I may say, I'm very, very happy and indebted to you. And we are proud of you as a member of our community. Okay. I'm very happy to be here. I'm Aja Hong from Google DeepMind, from Apollo team. Uh, thanks very much for the award. I'm really honored to be here. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about Apollo. The topic is combining deep neural networks with research. So the first slide is this one. Uh, I know every, uh, many of you uh, must see, maybe you watch the match, enjoy the match. Uh, it was a very happy moment for me when I see Apollo received the honorary 9P. 
which means professional nine them certificate from the Korean Bad Association, Go Association. Yeah. So it has been a long time dream of us that we can build a strong Go program. So actually, I have been in this community for many years. Actually, so I will talk about uh, my history now <laughs> of, of ICGA. So it's in, it was in 2006. I still remember it's in Turin. The, the city has, doesn't have many restaurants, I still remember. <laughs> and uh, I entered my first Go program, Aja Go. So Aja is my name, because uh, my Chinese name, Hong Sijie, uh, Ajie, so I call Aja. Uh, so I entered the program for fun, actually. Why I say it's for fun? This is how Aja Go works. I will just try now, very easy. If Aja Go is black, you will play at the center in first, for the first move. And then star mirror mode, whatever <laughs> white play star mirror mode. If the mirror point is illegal, you will play a random move until the end, the end of the game. If Ajago is white, if the opponent plays at the center, you will pass. <laughs> That's star mirror mode. So the program was actually a few hundred lines of code, you know. So I, when I described the algorithm to Professor Yi Chen Wu, the creator of Connect6. But he told me, Acha, you're here for fun. Just for fun, right? <laughs> but I told him, yes, I was, I'm here for fun. <laughs> uh, so that's the first year I entered my uh, first Go program, Acha Go. Uh, I had some photos, but it has some problem here. So I will just uh, describe. At that time, I see the photos, like, including Ryan, including like, uh, Professor Herrick, many people, like, uh, including Remy Collin. So it was the first year he entered his, the first in the history, the first Polynesian tree search program. Yeah. So I still remember because at that time I tried to learn from the community. I'm a PhD student, and from Taiwan, my English was a bit broken, you know. So I tried to uh, speak to people as small as possible to try to learn from them, try to communicate from them uh, with them, and try to uh, uh, how to say experience the fun. The, of the terminal. I still remember Remy Collin was staring at the screen all the time. Yeah. So he won the 9x9 competition that year. So that proved, actually start the whole MCTS area that still dominate. Actually, Apple is using MCTS. So uh, Remy was staring at the screen, and I tried to speak to him, but he just, I think he was amazed that, because he, he's not so strong, but he was amazed that his program can be so strong. <laughs> So that's 2006. In 2007, I still remember the, the Computer Olympia was in Amsterdam. Yeah, I, I entered, so I play, we play computer chess program that year. And I, so Ajago was a bit, you know, broken. You know, so I didn't develop, continue. And uh, uh, so that year, Mogo entered the tournament, Mogo. So that was the year that really motivated me to get in computer go area. Why? You know Mogul's author, uh, two main authors, is Isao Wang and the main author is Sivan Gary. Savan Savan Gary. Savan Gary, French. And uh, he is a Go beginner, you know. He doesn't know Go very much. So he just keep asking me, who is the head? Acha, who is the head? I was very impressed, you know. <laughs> he is the author of the strongest program in the world at that time. But he is a go beginner, so you know how strong is the power of MCTS plus UCT. Yeah. So many people have read, maybe read about the, the paper of UCT. That's a revolutionary paper. Yeah. So I was really impressed because I played against Mogo there, night by night. I, at that time, I, I didn't believe that he can beat me. I didn't believe. I, I thought no program can beat me on night by night go. But Mogo beat me several games. And Chris Stone too. So the every time we said, oh, okay, start and just play. <laughs> I play very hard and lost some games, some games. So at that time I really motivated to put, to uh, start computer go research. So you can uh, I, so I say this is I want to say that I grew up here. That's why I'm really honored to be here. Yeah. Oh I was a compete. I would you know learn a lot from here and actually many good ideas are uh, spawned from this community. Including monocultural research, many search, many machine learning, and many you know game-related uh, uh, ideas. Yeah. So uh, so 
my laptop will go to sleep five minutes, every five minutes. It's not changeable. It's a <laughs> Google machine. So it's preventing that you forgot. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I have to do something every five minutes. Yeah. So when I do computer go, why? So you can know that because I like go. When I start in 2007, when I play against Mogul and Greystone, I was intrigued because I like Go so much. So I want to build a strong Go program. So it's a fun for me, it really, really, uh, because I like Go. Uh, if I wrote a program that can be very strong, I would be very happy. I think that's the same with many people too. They write uh, game programs because they like the game. And human, we, we like games, right? No matter video game or board games. Because games are so fascinating to us. And when I joined Google DeepMind, I found another aspect of game programming. Yeah. That is, game is the good aspect of artificial intelligence. Yeah. So Google DeepMind, when I joined Google DeepMind, I realized one thing, that is that for fun, actually there is a, another uh, good mo motive for the game development. That is the uh, AI, yeah. because game is people, uh, it's very very concrete objective, right? You, you have win or lose a game. There are concrete steps. There are different uh, types of games. Some are complete information, some are not complete information, right? So, DeepMind's mission is to solve intelligence and solve everything else, yeah. Uh, and use it to make the world a better place. So, we do alpha goal, except that I like goal from my perspective. But they might do our goal also is to promote artificial intelligence. If you say that if we can solve goal, it's a so complicated, it's an enormous such space game, then we can handle many problems because in the real world problem, there are so many possibilities. We can uh, make the range, small the range smaller to a, that we can handle, that trackable, trackable. You know, if we do uh, brute force search in, in Go, it's impossible. Right. So we have some, some, uh, we can uh, make the pro problem trackable. Oh, I'm sorry, five minutes. <laughs> so now I will talk about AlphaGo. So I personally operate AlphaGo against this side and by the way, every game against pros. I was very honored because in the past, I, I think many people, professional, even professional players told me that in their whole life, they have no chance to even sit in front of this I thought, <laughs> to play one game. <laughs> so he, uh, like my friend, told, I have a pro friend, he, he told me that, actually, I'm proud of you, you know. <laughs> but I, I was very honored too, yeah. So I tried to be, uh, tried to respect me during the whole match. Although we didn't speak, yeah. So, yeah, he, he didn't speak English, but uh, uh, we speak at the board, yeah. So, what is the key of Abbaso? Why AlphaGo can reach such a strong point? You know, when I do computer code in 2010, I have a program, Eric. Uh, I spent a lot of time to do handcraft features, large patterns, improve the playouts, you know, and uh, at all the time, I spent small change, see winning rate, and uh, see which feature help. Of, of course, I do machine learning to be I train the features by some method, you know, machine learning method, but it's a, it was, I, I, at that time, it was, you know, it was very long, long way to go to achieve professional level, even the top professional level. Yeah. So uh, why why AlphaGo can be so strong? What makes AlphaGo so powerful? You know, there's a big jump in playing strength from Erica or the strongest program that uh, well known Zen and Crystal. It's from six time amateur to professional. There's a three stone gap, three stone gap at least. Then there's a big gap from the weak professional player to the top professional player. Why AlphaGo can jump so fast? When I start, when we start AlphaGo, we make a decision that we don't do the old ways. If we do the old approaches, we become a bit stronger, less meaningless to us. So we start a new approach. We try to do deep, uh, deep learning from, from this deep learning side to see whether it works at all. Yeah. So the real power of AlphaGo comes from the deep neural networks. That's what I want to focus today, that it's really powerful. I, I'm in, in the experience of this. In the beginning, I didn't believe it. <laughs> in the beginning, I was really impressed by the power of neural networks. I still remember the first time I tried the Palace Network, less than the end of 2014. 
So uh, at, I, I, at the time I was thinking, maybe I rebuild some, something from Erica. Right? I have experience. I can rewrite the code and uh, the, the features. So the, the, then we, we tried, OK, then let's try parsing. What about we just do a network, learn the professional moves, and then we plug the network into the MCTS, see what happened. I still don't remember the first experiment. experiment. <laughs> That's a, uh, I never forget. I see the win rate is 100%, 100% stronger. It didn't win, it didn't lose any game in the, the whole many, many games. It's like 100%. So we said at, at that time, it's immeasurably stronger, immeasurably stronger yeah. than the old, the old approach. Yeah. So uh, I was very impressed. That's the start of Ababo. So we published the paper. The paper name is uh, Move Evaluation by Deep Convolutional Neural Networks. Yeah. If you are interested, it's uh, mainly developed by our intern, Chris Madison. It was very interesting work. Yeah. And we are the venture staff. Uh, the goal is deep learning. So if you see here, I will show you. This is a chess game, right? So I want to confirm that Chess haven't reached the best player, right? Haven't. Maybe is right. Is that correct? Haven't reached. It's far still far from. Yeah. So go. Abago is still not yet. Yeah. So you see the chess is the search space is very huge. But go is even bigger. It's enormous. So it's impossible to do brute force search. Now, the real power of Abago is in convolutional network networks that we use two types of neural networks. Even today, the, up, the basic power of AlphaGo lies in these two networks. The first one is the value network. That is used in MCTS to evaluate position. So we know, I just say that, Remy Holland started the revolution of monoculture search. It's by what? It's by, it, do a, it has a tree search. Every time it reaches a big node to evaluate a goal or position. It's because it's very hard to come up with a static value, evaluation function, right? So we do a monocolor rollouts, and when the rollouts gets more and more, the average value gets close to the good value. It is a, a, pro, a good pro, a process value. So value never replaced that. Actually, he actually evaluate directly, provide a value function. Right? So <laughs> I, know, I know many people think that it's very hard to come up with the evaluation function, right? But that, that's actually what humans do. When we play goal, when we see a ball, we say, we say who is ahead on the ball. We basically just stay at the ball. Then we look at, look at every region of the ball, right? We, then we say, OK, maybe black is ahead. We maybe count a bit the territory. Then we conclude that, oh, in this position, black is ahead. We don't do wrong, actually. This is from the human perspective. We just look at the static ball. This is what the neural, work, neural network do, the value network do. You basically make a static evaluation of the current ball. The other one is the power network, I just said. That's immeasurably stronger. <laughs> in the beginning of the development of Alpha I was really impressed. And uh, this is just, it takes a ball uh, representation. And then it output a probability distribution of the current ball. He says, which moves are more promising? You have a distribution, then you search according to use this distribution to do search. So this, these two things, the power network and the value network, are the key of Abago strength. So here we have this open search. So battle network basically reducing the depth of search because he can stop at any node. He doesn't need to go all the way to the end of the game. Then he can re return the value of the position. And Palace Network reduces the breadth of the search because he doesn't need to search all moves. He can, like a like big search, he can limit the search to some promising move, maybe 20, 10. In some position, maybe then just one promising move. So as to make the whole search, big search, to a tractable uh, condition. Now I will speak about how to train these neural networks. It's very important because the neural networks, are, they are so complicated. They are very powerful, but they also need a uh, very long time, very careful training. And it needs much resource to train. Yeah. Okay, so 
basically, at first, how do we train the policy network? We basically take the human games, many expert games. We treat them, okay, now we just want to mimic them, those strong humans. So we use, we do supervised learning over uh, from the human games. So we have the policy network. Then we use reinforced learning to do self-play. We basically play uh, the past network against itself to improve itself. Then we have another network, which is called the RL network, reinforced learning network. Then we use the RL network to, to do self-play, to generate self-play games. So this here is self-play data. Use this data, we train the better network. So you can see that Actually, AlphaGo's real uh, magic is lies in value network, and it's actually several steps. Because you have to train, you have a, you need a past network first. You need to improve the past network itself to become strong in self -play. Then you need to generate the, the games so that you can do regression on this game, on this uh, outcomes. And then you have to, all after all this, you can train a better network. Okay, so this is the policy network. So we use, so, so uh, uh, there are many details can be found in the paper. I won't say it's this. <laughs> so we try many, many different architecture. What we write in the paper is the one we found is the mo most effective one. So uh, why is 12 layer? Why, why is not, why is the filter is only 196? Why not more? Because we, we found this the most effective. So the past network actually just have 12 layers. And the training data is here. Training algorithm. Basically, it just do maximum likelihood. And you can see that it takes four weeks on 50 GPUs using Google resource. So I would say our success won't be possible if we are not in Google. <laughs> yeah, because uh, we use really a lot of resource to speed up the training. And Google has really good framework. Yeah, we are really grateful for, for that. So I've always said, you know, many things together is make it possible. Yeah. Okay, so it reaches 57 percent accuracy <coughs> on KGS data set. We use KGS uh, games. Then we do reinforced learning. Basically, we play again. We play a different past network. You know. So many people say that Avago can play against itself to, to uh, learn from itself. So they, they feel uh, this is really amazing because that uh, human they improve slowly, right? And Avago can play against itself. To, this is the power of reinforcement re re learning. Uh, in the past, actually, I don't. Uh, in the past, I, I don't really get involved, involved too much in reinforcement learning because I thought it's not useful. But in Avago, I see the power. I see the power. This is really powerful. So if you play different past network, you can just use reinforce past gradient to make the network stronger and stronger. And then you get a network that's really strong in play games. Okay, so it takes one week on the GPU using Google Cloud to train the network. So the network itself, if you play the game, it reaches three emerging then. So I can tell you one story. Uh, one day, I was checking the experiment. I am meant. This is what we call I am meant because it is a trend by we do learning. So in our we have a terminal system, right? So we have crystal there, the strongest version of crystal. So the network itself, without search, it can beat crystal like a something like ten percent games. I checked again. I was really impressed. This is no search at all. It just the network itself. <laughs> it just take the the maximum probability loops. It's deterministic, but it can be crazy though. I mean, and it plays some really, like, I check some capture rate, Senia. It played perfectly in that Senia. I was really surprised. Yeah. This is the soul, it's the power of neural network. Yeah. I hope to, I hope to uh, interest you and impress you by the power of neural network from my experience and also our success. I want to let you know very clearly that the neural network is really powerful. There's no doubt. We should all, uh, it's, it, will change, it has already changed many areas, like speech recognition, like uh, image recognition. Then, how do we train the better network? We have the IOMet, so we need the data set. Because better network basically just a regression over the outcome. You, you take a state, you take a board, right? 
you want to know what's the value of the board evaluation. So we have every we have do we generate many games. We take one position from every game to to prevent overfitting. There are totally 30 million games of self play. So we generate 30 million games. Each game we take only one position randomly. Then because each game has an outcome, right? who wins the game? We very clear. We just play to the, the end game. So we try basically to regret do regression over the state and outcome pairs. Okay, so minimize MSV and the training time is still one week on 50 GPUs using Google Cloud. Now this is the plot of the the error of the <coughs> we can see the uh, the value net power here. The the top curve is the uniform random law. It means that if you run the hundred playouts, it's completely uniform random. The loss is very large, right? Because uh, this is a different move number, uh, different the x x axis is the move number, and if you in the, in the start, then it's not accurate. Right? It always thinks the game is even, of course. Then, but the game has outcome, so it always fifty percent, fifty. And you can see the value net is the the solid line. It's just a bit higher than the bus network. What, what does that mean? That means that if you play the Monte Carlo playout directly by the network, every step you call network, which is very slow, which is very slow. <laughs> But if you even you do that, the loss is actually not much lower than the battle net. So you can see actually battle net is like a cache of those positions outcome. You can treat it as a cache. But it's not it, it doesn't remember, it's general, it's a power of generalization. Okay? So AlphaGo, basically the power of AlphaGo, he uses two neural networks. And then we combine the two neural networks into the search effectively. So we basically do a synchronization, a synchronized, uh, a synchronized uh, calling these neural networks because they are really too slow. We cannot do the synchronous. So now I think many people are familiar with Monica. We will, I will go very fast. So basic selection, we just pick a move according to a value. It's action value plus some bonus term. The bonus term depends on the, the value, prior value returned by the policy network. So here, the policy network, its role is in the selection phase. Then, when he reached the lead node, he do expansion. After the basic count, he set over a, a threshold. Then, he had, the key here is the evaluation. Because when you reach the lead node, we do two kinds of evaluation. The first one is value network. The second one, we still do morning color rollouts. Then we try to mix these two values. Some people may be wonder, wondering why we just don't we just we don't just use value network if the value network is so powerful. So we found our experience found that actually the value network and the only color rollouts they are complementary. If you mix them, it's much stronger than each them stand alone. Much stronger, it's like over 90%. So I try very hard to find out why. I try very hard to use just the value network, but it turned out that the mixing becomes much stronger. It's actually a bit like TD lambda. So basically, you uh, weight each different length uh, of uh, the different le length of uh, path, yeah, differently. So it actually, it's not exactly the same, but a bit, a bit like that. So Avago still use rollouts and still and use value network, but you mix them. It's the source of power. When we do backup, we just, so there are two kinds of backup. The Monte Carlo backup basically synchronously, when you do a play out, you back propagation from the path, you go descend. But because value network is called asynchronously, when he finished, then he will asynchronously update the path when you descend in your atomic. So whenever it's available, the, the search will use it. Okay, so all the details. It's in our nature paper. Yeah, I would recommend you read it. <laughs> it's a good paper, and uh, we actually spend much time to make sure the details uh, correct. But there's one detail is was is wrong. I, I can say here, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry for that. That is the accuracy of raw policy. 
In the paper we write it's 24%. It's actually, it should be 30%. Yeah. I noticed that there's a researcher from another company. He said uh, he cannot reproduce all results. But I, this is because I write the wrong number. Yeah. It should be 30%. Okay. Now, we want to evaluate AlphaGo. So I know that in the uh, AlphaGo big alpha version player, but at the time of Nature published, uh, we actually very carefully to play different versions of pro against different versions of program and self play. So it's very surprising. In that, at that time, AlphaGo beats almost all the every game against the the program available: Pachi, Fuego, Zen, Ray, Strong. It only lost one game against Zen. <laughs> oh, luckily, yeah. I checked that game. Uh, yeah. So we cannot. No, it's not Fatal logo. Fatal logo. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is our nature paper too. Now, after the nature paper, we make another big jump. It's another 1,500 ELO stronger since the nature paper. Yeah. So this is roughly, we, this is called B18. The B18 is actually much stronger than B13, which was playing against Fan Hui. Yeah, this is a big jump there, and we, pub we probably will publish another paper, we don't know, but uh, this is uh, we have some new ideas and we do a lot of optimizations and uh, stronger neural networks too. Yeah. But know that this, the evil rating are based on self play. So play. They are maybe yeah, biased because it's not, we cannot find other programs. At least everything is 100%, so we, we cannot find other programs to test against. Yeah, okay. So, we want to know how strong is AlphaGo. So we play against Fan Hui and Disciple. So we, uh, in March 2016, we beat Disciple 4-1. So we were, actually, in the, before the match, I was a bit confident that we, I, we can beat Disciple, but I was not sure. So my prediction was 3-2. <laughs> Three wins, two losses, yeah. Uh, so, uh, but I was uh, a bit confident, yeah. But because AlphaGo was uh, improving very fast, a lot, at that time. So yeah, it's a very, uh, it's a very nice result. I was, I was very happy. We, the team was very happy too. Okay, now I will talk about many people is interested. What happened in game four? Uh, then you will see that in game four, uh, Ababa was uh, playing strangely, playing strangely. Right. Uh, after the seventy eight, these are the move of God. <laughs> Yeah, and then he triggered Abago like into something crazy mode. Yeah. So we, we <coughs> actually several months we spent much time to investigate why why Abago goes crazy. When I played the game, I was very surprised. What's, what's going on? <laughs> I was then I know that Abago is going to resign soon. Yeah, at that time. So we have two possible. We we are not a hundred percent sure, but we have two possible explanations, which is the first one is probably the rise of the fact. That is, if you see the professional, their, their, their comments, the best variation they come up with is somehow a, a bit deep in the research. So it's probably the past network failed to guide the search up to that, which, that, that point. Yeah, that's possible. That's one possible explanation. The other one is probably the weakness of better network. That is because these are those move 78. It's like very, very low probability. So we know that better network needs the cell play games to train, right? If the cell play games play very less that condition, situation, then he will never see that situation. So when he into that situation, he will like becomes, he just don't know how to, he just uh, not familiar, familiar to it. Yeah. So that's possible that, because the, that movement was so low probability. Luckily, the latest version fixed the problem. <laughs> yeah. The latest version of what we try actually probably last week. Luckily, he played correctly, which means that if this set of play 78, the latest version of Apple take over, Apple might win the game. <laughs> so we were happy with the fix. And then, then actually we didn't do, we didn't do much, <coughs> actually, big fix, we do machine learning, then the latest version automatically fixed the problem. Yeah. Okay, if you have a question later, we can just, you can talk about the game for that. So what's next? AlphaGo is still improving. We are not, <laughs> we are not closing AlphaGo now. But probably some other areas, right? The medical and robots. And, yeah. There's uh, many possibilities. 
We can just divide the mission is not just a goal. Divide the mission is to build AI, to sub AI, and to make the world a better place, to use a bubble's technique to other approaches, to, to solve more practical problems of human, that to make the world better. So, uh, of course, we are thinking the next step. Now, actually, we have a medical project now, as you might know. Okay, so this is the Apago team. I'm very proud of working with them. This is that every one of them contributes to Apago, one side or the other. Now, this is a really amazing. I can tell every member's contribution. I, yeah, maybe some, someday we'll, we will write a book. <laughs> yeah. uh, every one of them was really helpful. And it's a really nice uh, experience of working with this uh, team. Yeah. And it's really, they are nice people and they are very capable. They are very motivated. Yeah. So our goal, success depends on everyone. Okay, thanks. I think this is my presentation.